afternoon. I want to show you something here. I've got to put solid wood on uh, this panel here. And uh, when you're putting this on, you have a couple of options uh, of doing it. You can miter it, and then you can get a nice tight edge. But I want a nice solid on here because it's going to be a post for an island. And uh, if, if I do it with a miter, it means uh, my melamine edge here is actually going to show it. I, I really don't want to do that just because it can chip it easy. So I want solid. I want about at least three quarters of an inch solid uh, showing on that one side. But when you put this on, uh, you can glue it up, uh, clamp it up, disc it, whatever you want. But you're always going to get a telegraph line where this, this inside edge meets the panel. Uh, and I don't care how you do it, but after, after about a year, you're going to see that slight uh, line. So what I like to do is I like just like to enhance the line. I don't want to actually make it flush. I want to make it so that it shows the line. So all I'm doing is putting a small radius on my solid wood here and my panel. So basically, I'm putting about a 32nd of an inch radius on here, or even a little bit less, and then I'm going to put this on. And what it does is it gives a nice little reveal line all the way down uh, the panel. And when I do it this way, uh, you, you look at it and you, and you get a nice crisp line all the way down. And I've never had a customer ever said that they didn't like it. Uh, I've had customers saying, why is that little line like two years later? Because they got a telegraph line, but never this way. There's a couple of little tricks as well when I, uh, when I put this thing together. I want to show you what it looks like and how to prep it for paint. But uh, right now I'm going to glue this thing on. And uh, just one bead of glue is good because you don't want to uh, put a ton of glue on here because you don't want to get a ton of squeeze out on it. And I just got pipe lamps. They work great. And when you're putting this on, here's a little tip. If you don't want glue to squeeze out one direction or the other, you can put it this way and the glue will squeeze this way. But if you put it down this direction, like so, it'll force the glue the other direction and then you won't get that squeeze out. So that's kind of what I want on this one. I want it flush there. going to snug that up. And you can see here I'm going to be putting these clamps just a slight bit of an angle here because this is a 5 8 panel and I want to get that balanced right in the middle. So I'm going to turn the clamp just about 45 degrees to get it into that position that I want. The other thing is if you're doing it this way and you're off just a little bit, at the end of the day it really doesn't matter too much. You don't have to clamp it hard. Once that sets up, it'll be fine. Here, take a look. Okay, you see the line right there? All the way across. Next part of this is I'm going to show you the trick on how to get this prepped for finishing. So at this point, Here's one of the most important parts of this whole thing. If you were to paint this now, what happens is the paint goes into that little uh, B groove right here. And if, if there's any point where it doesn't have any kind of connection, meaning there's a little void, let's say the clamp didn't clamp well enough or whatever, what you need to do is you got to do what's called bridging. And all you do is you take some spackling and just fill it into the hole. Go down the whole length of what you just did. Okay, and you're not trying to fill it in so much as you are just trying to create a small bridge. And all I do is I just, with my finger, just push it down. And what that does is it fills the joint, but it doesn't fill it enough. So it, what it's going to do is going to give you a nice reveal line all the way through that whole length. And if there's any kind of 
space where there's a bit of a, a dip or a hole, it fills it in. And when the paint goes in it, it just goes nicely into that kind of valley and it'll come out perfect every single time. So it's a very simple, easy trick to do. This works on shelving or anything like this. It's actually really good for shelving when you do it this way. All right, I got it done here. It's all nicely sanded flush. I can just feel that line all the way through there. And even if it's up just a little bit, it really won't matter at the end of the day. But now I've got this post on here and it protects that surface so that if it gets hit on the edges here, I know that it'll withstand some kind of abuse uh, in the future. I'm going to be adding a baseboard that gets wrapped all the way around it. That's the reason for this piece of plywood. Anytime I'm using a melamine surface, especially for an end panel, I'll put a little bit of plywood at the bottom, like about two inches, and that way it protects it. But this gives a great surface to be able to paint on. So that's the reason for that. But this is ready to go into the booth, and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. All right, I got the posts done. I actually glued the baseboards on the posts for the island here. I was originally going to make them as a slip-on slip, uh, slip -on molding, but the reality is it's a brand new build, so uh, uh, the house is nice and flat, and I think I can get away with it, and I won't have to do probably any scribing on this floor. If it was an older home, I kind of like to leave this base as a slip base so that uh, I can uh, put the post down and then just lift up the one side, slip the base in after it's been leveled up, and then just trim and scribe the base to fit the floor. But in this case, I don't think I have to worry about that. So I glued and nailed everything on, puttied them. And I've also got spackling all in the corners, uh, like at the 90s here. So it'll be a nice, crisp line all the way around it. So there's no reveal there. But what I have for some of my other posts is this right here. And that's what I'm talking about. It's a slip, uh, a slip on molding. So I can basically just put my panel down and then slide that into the panel and then it covers up anything on the floor. That's the reason I do that. So everything now is uh, bondoed up. I like bondo as opposed to using spackling, which is this here. I only use the spackle uh, just on small holes, but if it's uh, anything like a nail hole, I fill it in with bondo because I find it uh, sands uh, pretty well the same as the wood that I'm using for paint grade. It works great. So uh, this is ready to be prepped and ready to go. All right, I'm gonna put a coat on here right now and I'll show you a close up of what it looks like, especially at this point right here. Just see that line through it and that'll shrink back nicely but that's a definite line all the way down the panel and that will never have one of those separations or craze lines on it 